I've been using these $59 raised beds for three long years, and I'm going to tell you what I love about them, what I hate about them, and ultimately help you decide if these beds are the perfect fit for your garden. So get ready for the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's right, I'm doing one of my brutally honest product reviews. Katrina here with Homegrown Florida. Before we get into the details, let me quickly share how I stumbled upon these budget-friendly raised garden beds. Well, three years ago, I was on the lookout for a cost-effective solution to expand my garden space. <laughs> At the time, I was completely in containers, like the grow bags to be specific. I had moved from my old house with my old garden into this house and I was still assessing, you know, the sun patterns before I made my decision on which part of the yard that the garden was gonna be on. I knew I wanted to get some raised beds because I had a wooden raised bed at my last garden and I learned a lot through that experience. One of the big takeaways that I had from my last garden was that wood warps in heat and rain. <laughs> it only took a couple years in the old garden before the wood started to deteriorate, so I knew I needed something different. I started looking into concrete blocks, metal frames, cedar wood, and even stone. After a lot of extensive research, I landed on galvanized steel as a type of bed that I wanted to get. My husband has a lot of experience with building materials and we really looked at it from kind of all angles and it just seemed like the one that would hold up the longest and looked pretty. I looked at a lot of different brands and then I discovered these $59 raised garden beds. At the time that I got them, they were closer to $100 each and I bought four to start with. It's those four over there in that corner that uh, were the first four that I got. I put them in and I waited a year before I bought another five. <laughs> the first four went in all at the same time. The remaining five I put in over a period of two, year, two years with the ninth bed going in just a few months ago. I did a whole video on how I filled this uh, raised bed up. So if you wanna check that out, I'm gonna put that at the end of this video. Now let's jump into the five top reasons why I love these beds. <laughs> Number one, affordability. These beds are an absolute steal at just $59. <laughs> If you're on a tight budget but still want to elevate your gardening game, these beds are a fantastic option. They have pretty much been on sale all the time. So if they are full price right now, just wait a couple weeks. They are going to be going on sale, I'm sure. Number two, they're really super easy to assemble. Assembling these raised bar garden beds was really a breeze. I'm not a super handy person, so if I put them together, you can definitely do it. <laughs> Now my husband is very handy, but I didn't want to have to, you know, go have him do it every time I wanted to do a project or put one in. This was something I wanted to be able to do all on my own. So I didn't want to have to wait for him to be available for me to be able to put one of my beds in. Now the third thing that I liked is their durability. Despite their low price, these beds have proven to be surprisingly durable. <laughs> They're weathered through hurricanes, intense Florida heat, and way too much rainfall without deteriorating. There is one spot on these beds that does have rust, but I know why that happened. We had a sprinkler right here that hit that bed for two and a half years. <laughs> that constant spray must have broken down the protective coating over time. Normally city water uh, shouldn't do this, but we have well water that is untreated, so it might be more acidic, which can cause the outer coating of the galvanized steel to wear away and then reveal the steel and then cause rust. We have since moved that sprinkler since we put in the RV pad, but we haven't worked on correcting you know, the rust issue yet. I've inspected the rest of the beds and you can see there is no rust anywhere else not at the connection points, not inside. It's holding up really well. The fourth thing I really love about these beds is that they don't absorb heat. <laughs> I've heard horror stories from other gardeners who have metal beds and the metal heats up so much it can burn you when you touch them. And that is not only unsafe, it also heats up your soil a lot, which means more watering and stress to the plants. I'm assuming that the galvanized coating on the steel or something else helps insulate the bed so they don't really get hot. We're in the summer right now, and when I touch a bed, it feels warm, but not hot. I can keep my hand on it for hours and not feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Number five, the great height. 
um, for all these plants. These beds are 12 inches high, so a foot. Most plants do fine with one foot of depth, but there are some bigger ones that would prefer up to 18 inches. The thing I like about these beds is that they're open on the bottom, so the soil under the bed is available to them to grow down into. I've never had an issue with a plant outgrowing the raised bed space because of this. If you're interested in getting these beds, I'm going to add a link in the description below. Now let's focus on the not so fun aspect of these, the top five cons that I've encountered while using these raised beds. The number one is that the bottom is open. It sounds backwards because I just said that I liked it that they have no bottoms. But if you have a problem with something like voles or moles, this bed is not going to keep them out unless you do something underneath it, like put down hardware cloth or something. The second con, the depth of the bed is fine for plants, but not so much for my back. <laughs> if you're doing a long harvest or a big planting, your back can get really sore. <laughs> Also, depending on mobility issues you might have, these may not be the best choice for you since they do require being lower to the ground. For me, it's kind of give and take. Yes, my back hurts after a long day in the garden, but if these beds were waist high and I was growing a six foot tall tomato plant, I'd have to build super tall trellises and then get a ladder out every time I needed to harvest something. So that's definitely something you might want to think about when considering a short bed versus a high bed. Number three is sharp edges. <laughs> These beds do have some sharp edges, but the bed edge right here and right here, they don't, they have like a rounded edge, but the corner pieces right here, they don't have that. And so they're a little bit sharp. Now I've never hurt myself and neither have my dogs. I can see how it might not be a good idea if you have young children. Maybe you have a very large rambunctious dog that could bump into it and scrape themselves or maybe you have balance issues and could stumble into them. I think this is probably the biggest negative about them. There is um, some quarter inch tubing that you get from the hardware section in Home Depot that you can slice open and glue it to these parts to make it more safe if you're concerned about that part. This is the part right here that has that sharp edge on the top. Number four, it only comes in one shape and one size. <laughs> this bed comes in an eight by four foot rectangle. That's it. No other shapes, no other sizes are available. Now the lengths of the sides, like this side and then this side, come in four foot pieces. So you could make a smaller bed if you wanted to, or a longer one if you wanted to, but you end up with more pieces than what you need because you have to buy them as one kit and not buy the pieces. They don't come in round shapes or ovals or anything like that, so it limits your creativeness of the space that you have. If your backyard isn't square like mine, this could have some disadvantages with utilizing the space in the most effective manner. Number five, it is not a big brand name company. This is not a bed from a big brand name that's good or bad, right? A generic no name brand usually means it's cheaper, but with no name or no brand, it usually means there really isn't anyone to go to if you have an issue besides the standard Amazon return policy. With the big name brands, you have, they sometimes give you a warranty with their beds, which gives you a little bit of extra peace of mind, even if it's just for a short time, like 30 or 90 days. They also have dedicated customer service teams that can help you with questions or issues. With these beds, you're on your own. <laughs> I highly recommend that if you decide to get these, make sure to open them up and check that all the pieces are in the box right away. So if there is any issue, you can send it back. Um, if you wait to open it till you're ready to put the bed together, you could miss that Amazon return window. If you enjoy my brutally honest reviews like this one, make sure to head down and give me a thumbs up. That way I know this is something that you guys find valuable. Now let me tell you who I think can benefit most from these $59 raised garden beds. Number one, beginner gardeners. If you're new to gardening and you want an affordable, simple way to start growing your veggies and plants, these beds are a fantastic choice. They are easy to put together and they are quick to get started with. Number two, small garden spaces. For those with limited outdoor space, these beds are a great solution for cultivating a variety of plants without overwhelming your area. You don't have to have nine beds like me. One or two are great for a standard backyard.
That way you still have space for playing with your kids or pets in the yard without tripping over a bunch of beds. That's actually the reason why I haven't done anything over in that space over there. That will always be open space for playing fetch with Chloe and Bella or doing yoga when the weather is nice or playing with my nieces and nephews when they visit. Now number three is budget conscious gardeners. If you're mindful of your spending but still want reliable garden beds, these affordable options will suit you perfectly. Gardening can be an expensive hobby if you buy all the gadgets, but if you want to grow food for your family that helps reduce your expenses, this is a great direction to go. Maybe you just want to garden as a healthy hobby. You probably don't want to dump a bunch of money into something just so you can have some pretty flowers to look at. $59 isn't necessarily cheap, but it's definitely one of the least expensive metal raised bed kits that I have found. Now wood used to be the inexpensive route, but that cost of wood has really gone up since 2020. So that really is only economical for those with access to used lumber or other recycled building materials, which is not me. We don't have normal access to those kinds of things. So there you have it, my honest review of these $59 garden raised beds. I've shared the good, the bad, and the ugly to help you make an informed choice for your garden. Remember, every gardener's needs are different, so consider your specific requirements before making a choice. If there is a product or tool or something that you would like me to do a good, bad, ugly review on, head down into the comments and leave me a note. I'll do my best to research them and possibly try them out for you. If you're sold on getting a raised bed, check out this video next on how you can fill one of those raised beds for just $30. Happy gardening, guys.